Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Caleb Thornton and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at a newer released mouse from Corsair, which is a budget friendly wireless mouse and it's called the Guitar Pro Wireless. So stick around to hear about the build quality, features, performance, whether it's worth the price, I'm gonna be right for you. You can find this on Corsair's website or I actually just bought it off Best Buy. It is on Amazon, but it's just not available for purchase yet. Um, when it does come available, I'll update the description down below with a link to that. Only $40 for this thing, which is definitely a great price point and super competitive in the the likes of what it is competing with with other wireless um, budget friendly mice. Packaging itself, pretty stinking simple besides getting the mouse itself. You're gonna get a AA battery included to help power it along with an instruction panel just to help you get started. Quickly touching on connectivity and battery life right out of the bat here because this is a wireless mouse and probably a lot of you guys are gonna be interested in that. On Corsair's website, they claim it gets up to 135 hours of battery life, which is definitely really solid. Not as much as some of the competitors um, that we see with wireless mice, but still really good amount there. It's gonna last most people multiple months, um, unless you're maybe a hardcore gamer, maybe not quite as long. And as always, I'm just gonna recommend if you guys want to just invest in getting some rechargeable batteries, even though they are a little bit more expensive up front, it's gonna pay itself off in the long run because you're just able to keep recycling those and recharging the ones you already have along with being able to use it on their 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, which does take advantage of Corsair's Slipstream technology. Um, and you have to, to use it in a 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, you do have to use it with the included dongle, but they also have a Bluetooth connectivity mode, which is really nice to see, again, for just $40. So this is also gonna work really great for any devices you wanna use it on um, with that Bluetooth mode, as well as working good for a travel mouse. Getting into the design and build quality in this, I would say it's very comparable as far as weight goes to the other options, but still not a super lightweight option. Coming in at 96 grams, um, any other mice though that have batteries loaded into the back, such as like the Rival 3 or the G305 from Logitech, they are all around the same weight. So as far as it being on the heavier side though, it is completely comparable to those. So nothing, not like a big outlier in comparison to the others. Um, getting the shell off the back is as simple as just putting a little pressure on it. It pops off and back there's where you're either gonna you know, take out to replace the battery or put your battery in for your AA, as well as it's where your dongle is gonna be stored for using it in that 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection mode. Even with that thing being removed on the back, you might expect it to be maybe a little bit um, flexy back there on that thinner plastic piece, but overall, um, super solid, no panel flex on any of the sides. Um, so even though it had to have a removable piece on it, with that heavier weight, you kind of would expect it to, but overall, a solid build. Taking a look at the shell itself, you get this, it's very <laughs> generic overall. I mean, it's just a matte black finish. Besides the sides, I mean, it's still a matte black, but you get a little bit of a raised sort of like triangle shape. So I'll try to get some close-ups on this for you guys to see yourselves, which helps give that extra texture. And I really appreciate that because I usually generally don't like just a hard shell plastic mouse. I find them be a little bit slippery. So just throwing on that extra little grip on the side really helps you get into a grip, especially since this is a smaller mouse, you're most likely gonna be using a claw or fingertip grip style on it. On the back, you do get like a blacked out Corsair logo, um, still very minimal. And then on the like front left, or I guess right click of the mouse, you have a little bit of an inscription there, which is for the um, name of the mouse, KTWL. So overall branding, very minimal. It's just not much going on. Like it's not a super flashy mouse. The only light you do have on it is just the one that helps you indicate your battery life. It's either gonna flash green, yellow, or red, letting you know if you need to replace it or you're still good, as well as indicating your DPI stage that you're on. There's different colors associated with that. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be flashy, have lots of RGB, this is definitely not giving that to you. But for those of you that just want a clean, simple looking mouse, it definitely does give that. Talking about shape now, and you guys might've already noticed this watching some of that B-roll um, in the earlier parts of the video, it's very very similar to a Logitech shape of like the G203 or the G305 wireless with the exception of the hump being just higher on the back side of it. So if you're someone who likes that shape or that Logitech, they call it the egg shape a lot, then I would say you're really gonna like this mouse or you'll already be kind of familiar with that feel of shape. It is an ambi shape, but um, I kind of say that loosely because there is only buttons on the left side. So that does restrict it to only right hand users but it does still have that ambi shape overall. Another difference with the shape of it is it does come down to this point in the back, which I don't personally like. This is a personal preference thing though, so depending on your grip style or what you like, you might like it better. What I find though is as I'm gripping on this, since it does kind of just come down to a point back here, my hand just naturally kind of wants to follow the contours of it. I would have liked it a lot more if it was either just flat or maybe even scooped out a little bit in the back, but then again, that would be changing up the shape on it. But I would have liked that personally more myself. I just like to point out in case that's something you guys won't like. Overall though, um, this is mainly gonna be a claw or 
fingertip grip style mouse. For those of you with higher side of medium to larger hands like myself, those of you getting into the smaller side of medium or smaller hands, you could get into a palm a little bit easier in this because it does have that hump on the top which probably would fill out your hand a little bit better. Um, it is on the smaller side of a mouse, maybe a medium size though overall. So let's make sure you take those things into consideration if you're thinking about picking it up. I want to quickly mention that how the AA is in the back, it does throw the weight balance off a significant amount, I'd say it bothers me personally. The main thing with it is that like, obviously when you're moving your mouse and you have to pick it up to move it again, when you pick it up, I found that the back end would just naturally want to fall down with it being heavier in the back. It hit on my mouse pad, which kind of created a weird feeling. It just bothered me. I would want to point that out though. It might not be something that bothers everyone. It's just the weight balance is definitely back heavy. So if you're picking your mouse up a lot, or depending on how tight your grip style is, it might not bother you as much, but since I have more of a lighter grip, it just naturally wants to fall back when I pick it up off my mouse pad. You get six different programmable buttons on the Qatar Pro Wireless, which those are all configurable in the iQ software. I couldn't find any specifics about what switch type um, Corsair uses in it. If any of you guys know, definitely let me know in the comments below so I can know for my future videos when I'm talking about it. But before we talk any more about them, let's hop into a sound test right now. As you guys can hear from that sound test, buttons are pretty nice and clicky so far. Really responsive for me, giving me no issues as far as like debounce time or double clicking goes. I will say the buttons are probably one of the weaker points in the mouse, something that I don't enjoy quite as much. There is a little bit of pre-travel, not a lot of it. Um, there is a substantial amount of post-travel though, I would say. If that's something that bothers you, I just like to point it out so you guys know what you're getting. Following that over into the side buttons, they're decently mushy, not, nothing horrible. I would say they're very comparable to other mice with their side buttons. I feel like you never find perfect side buttons in your mouse, so I just like to point it out though, just so you guys know what you're getting into. The mouse wheel, probably my favorite part on the mouse as far as the buttons go overall, it has a full like rubber texture on it. It's not just a ring. It's nice and low profile too. It feels really nice, really grippy. It's decently tactile. Um, it's not super smooth rolling by any means and decently loud too if you're rolling on it quite a bit. Below that, you have your final customizable button there, which is your DPI button, which you can only set up to three different um, profiles in their software, and there's different colored lights, which you can also configure that too if you want for each DPI stage. Moving on to the bottom of the mouse, um, down here is where you find your switch that either allows you to go between your 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection mode or the Bluetooth. And when that switch is in the middle position, it'll be completely shut off. I will mention though, like if you do have it powered on into one of the modes and you just leave it sitting there, it, the mouse itself does go to sleep. And then if you move it, it takes around five seconds. So quite a while to wake back up and then catch back up with you. But it's just nice knowing that even if you forget to turn it completely off, you don't have to worry about it wasting your battery life while it's just sitting there. You do get one, basically they're pretty big skates on the bottom. They're not super thick by any means, but they're bigger one in the back and the front and they're not split apart, which I don't like when they split the skates. So it's nice to see they continue across the whole front and the whole back. So far, we're giving me decent glide. It's nothing super fast by any means, but it's been smooth and consistent so far. For the sensor on the bottom, it's using the PMW3325, which gives you a DPI adjustment from down to 200 all the way up to 10,000. So decent amount of range there should be more than enough for most people's needs. And as to expect with today's some um, age of mice and their sensors, super spot on for me so far from day-to-day -day use um, into gaming with that DPI adjustment in there. It's giving me everything I need, giving me a pixel for pixel tracking as well as no spin outs or falsiness in it overall. Quickly touching on the software, there really isn't much to change up on the mouse besides some um, DPI stages and then again, the color associated with each stage if you wanna have a specific color for your different stages that you wanna switch between, as well as in there you can remap your buttons, setting macro, or also changing up things like your pointer speed. Overall, I think the Qatar Pro Wireless does deliver a good amount of features and a solid build quality for $40. Again, my biggest complaints with it are just the kind of cheaper feeling clicks on it. I mean, it's nothing horrible, but you're getting a decent amount of pre and post travel on your mouse one and two, as well as your um, right side buttons on your thumb side. So nothing horrible on it. I just like to point it out as well as the shape, how it narrows down the back. For me personally, when I'm using claw grip, I don't like that because it just kind of makes me want to naturally go down to the back of the mouse, which I don't like. And then also the weight distribution. If you pick your mouse up a lot, you might find that irritating how it kind of just wants to instantly drop down on the back. 
These things are mostly me nitpicking, but for as of me as a reviewer, I like to give you guys the most accurate representation I can of what you're purchasing before you spend your hard earned money on something. And I will be doing a comparison video between like this, the Rival 3 and the G305 coming up here soon. So if you guys wanna get a more accurate idea of all those compared together, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found the video helpful or informative, please do hit that like button for me and consider subscribing for more content just like this in the super near future. As always, if you guys have any questions or comments about my time using it or the product itself or just wanna know more about it, there's something I didn't mention in the video, definitely leave it in the comments down below and I'll try my best to get back to you quickly and with the best response I can. And I'll see you guys in the next one.